7 Nightly News with Peter Mitchell. A yachtsman's joy, Raphael Donelli celebrates his safe return, but hopes fade for his missing English rival. Fishermen jump for their lives as a light plane crashes on their runabout. And a Richmond mum's surprise footpath delivery. Good evening. Also tonight, some good news for workers about the Australia Day holiday. First, another setback as rescuers close in on two lone sailors shipwrecked in the Southern Ocean. Deteriorating weather has forced the postponement of a helicopter mission as hopes fade for Englishman Tony Bullimore. But as John Vaughan reports, French yachtsman Thierry Dubois could be picked up as early as tomorrow morning. Survivor, this is Orion. Uh, outlook for next two days. Weather will be good. Weather will be okay, and uh, ship is en route to pick you up. First contact with Thierry Dubois. Despite his terrible ordeal, the Frenchman is coping well and in good spirits. With pinpoint accuracy, the RAAF drops supplies and a special radio. He's got it, he's got it, man. They maintained contact for several hours. It's very cold, it's very windy, and there were absolutely terrible conditions, so uh, he's done incredibly well. The weather's been so bad, his first life raft sank. We dropped him two more dinghies. He got into one of those. He looked quite safe and happy. And then the wind was so severe, it overturned him again. His rescue is now just over 12 hours away. HMAS Adelaide is travelling at almost full speed. And weather permitting, a helicopter will set out at first light tomorrow morning. We will maintain airborne contact with you until the ship arrives. But there's now real concern for Englishman Tony Bullimore. There's been no sign of him. The emergency beacon on board his capsized yacht is no longer working. It's hoped he's still in an airtight compartment on board his boat, but may not know help is at hand. Sonar devices and sound boys have been dropped nearby. An emergency beacon will ring out to alert Mr Bullimore a search is underway. The Navy's biggest ship, HMAS Westralia, will set out from Perth in the next few hours to refuel the Adelaide. At least the weather has been favourable overnight. Winds were just 20 knots, seas only 3 metres. But that's expected to change as a front moves through later tonight. John Vores, 7 Nightly News. As the desperate rescue bid for the two shipwrecked sailors intensifies, the Frenchman who cheated death in the same area 11 days ago finally set foot on dry land. Raphael Donelli arrived in Hobart with fellow sailor Peter Goss, who plucked him from a life raft minutes before his yacht sank. Mike Amor was with the welcoming flotilla. Aquacorum, the boat that captured world attention, arrived under the spotlight of a large media flotilla much to the surprise of an exhausted skipper, Pete Goss. Did you expect this type of welcome? The man he rescued, Frenchman Raphael Donelli, made a brief appearance on deck, only wanting to do an interview for French television. The round-the-world yacht was then towed along the Derwent River into Hobart. Von D Globe Race rules prevent it from docking or being boarded. No one's allowed on the boat, and I'm not allowed off, so I can't have a beer, which is a shame. I'm going to do a few jobs to the boat. And then I'm high-tailing off back down the Southern Ocean and round Cape Horn, over. Finally, Raphael Donelli's nightmare was over. A hug of gratitude for the man who saved his life, followed by a meeting with custom officials. Raphael, welcome to Australia. Thanks a lot. The 28-year-old later described how for almost two days he stood on the deck of his sinking yacht, almost convinced his distress signal had not been heard. Finally, when he thought death was just minutes away, an RAAF plane dropped a life raft. Uh, when the plane uh, full my, uh, my lifecraft, uh, ten minutes after my boat sank in. You know, he needed nursing for about three or four days and so on, but then he's got his strength back now and it's great, yeah. His arrival has also reignited a chorus of criticism of the man who cost Australian taxpayers several hundred thousand dollars. To add salt to the wound, it's believed he's also received 50000 from a French TV station. Money, he's adamant, won't be given to the Australian government. When questioned, the Frenchman had trouble with his English. Mike Amor, 7 Nightly News. CFA volunteers who battled a massive tyre blaze near Western Port Bay have been urged to undergo health checks. The fear that they've been exposed to toxic fumes because some of the firefighters weren't using breathing gear. 
This video footage has shocked the firefighters union and senior officers. It shows CFA volunteers right in the thick of highly toxic smoke from burning tyres without breathing equipment. Absolutely horrified. I mean, the sheer hypocrisy of the CFA is that last week they were in the media saying they wouldn't put firefighters at risk. Here we have footage uh, of firefighters being put in an extremely dangerous position. Experts say the area should have been evacuated and breathing apparatus mandatory for everyone attending. Horrified because of the ramifications further down the track of injuries that could have occurred. Breathing gear was available. A van carrying at least 30 kits and capable of refilling dozens of cylinders was on scene. Despite that, in some instances, one person was using a safety mask while the next firefighter wasn't. In this case, an entire team smothered as they battled to roll out hoses. The union fears volunteers who didn't take precautions may suffer serious health problems. Go and get a medical. Get a medical today, not next week, not a month. Although no one would appear on camera, CFA management say they've not received any complaints about the crib point fire and they've rated the operation an outstanding success. The union says it'll write to CFA command urging an inquiry. Steve Kerry, Seven Nightly News. Two fishermen in a dinghy had to jump for their lives when a light plane crashed in a ball of flame just metres from them. The pilot was killed when the single-engine Cessna struck power lines near a remote airstrip in far north Queensland. Witnesses say the plane bounced towards the fisherman's dinghy in a farm dam before bursting into flames. The others were shaken by their experience but were uninjured. Confusion tonight for Victorian workers who are trying to find out if they're entitled to an Australia Day long weekend. Kelly Russell explains that award uncertainties now mean individual bosses could decide whether it will be business as usual on Monday, January the 27th. Premier Jeff Kennett, always keen to promote Victoria on the move, launched a tram painted to mark the nation's birthday. But he's always been a strong opponent of taking a public holiday which doesn't fall on January 26th. And that happens this year when all states except Victoria have declared Monday a public holiday. But as Victorians move from state to federal awards, it means they should enjoy the long weekend with the rest of Australia. Those who are not on the federal award, it'll be a matter of personal choice as to whether they take it up or not. The only hitch is that the Victorian move hasn't been ratified in the Industrial Relations Commission and that means employers can still ignore the holiday. From a legal point of view, perhaps they're not required to do that. They simply will make that pragmatic decision. It's quite a confused situation overall. Employer groups say workers not covered by a federal award will have to either negotiate for the day off or wait until their employer decides whether or not they'll have to turn up for work. Kelly Russell, 7 Nightly News. Imagine getting a phone bill for almost $17,000. That's what's happened to a Glenroy man this month. Telstra admits it's a mistake and blames human error for the bungle. Alan Hayes and his family usually make only three local calls a day. Imagine Alan's shock when his last two monthly bill came to $16,921. I felt really sick when I opened it up and seen that amount. The bill accounts for 71,014 local calls. That's 1,183 a day, 49 an hour, 24 hours a day. After Alan complained, he was told to ignore it, but a disconnection bill arrived demanding the money. The faith I've lost is now, I don't know what they're going to say is my phone bill. Telstra admits it was human error. The system detected that there was a problem. Sadly, though, some human error meant that the bill was sent when it really should have been stopped and manually corrected. Alan Hay's bill may be a one-off, but the telecommunications ombudsman has called on Telstra to expand its itemised billing system to include local calls to restore public confidence. We're introducing a system that will allow local calls to be itemised as well, and that's basically come as a result of consultation with our customers. Telstra may be off the hook, but Alan Hayes plans to frame the bill as a ringing reminder. Lena Keneva, Seven Nightly News. A Richmond couple has delivered their baby daughter in very public circumstances, on the footpath outside their home. Dean Allen Craig explains. Tiny Khadija Besanson is resting peacefully after her rushed arrival on the Richmond Terrace footpath. It happened very fast, didn't it? Very fast. I knew it was going to be an event, but that much was too much. <laughs> the couple almost made it to the car, but suddenly knew it was too late. 
The second strong contraction, the baby was here. Neighbours were swept up in the emotion. The crying of the baby, baby. the crying of mommy, uh, and me crying the top. Olympic hockey gold medalist Nova Peris was one of the first neighbours to help. He was a bit shocked, but he was happy. All he could say was, my little girl, my little girl. So that was, you know, that was beautiful. Ambulance officers say it's lucky there were no complications and say by the time they arrived, there was little more to do than cut the cord and take the family to hospital. Unreal, because I haven't been to any training courses. I was a bit slack on that. I didn't believe in them. I always thought it was a natural thing. And uh, as natural as that, it just doesn't come any better than that. Dean Allen Craig, Seven Nightly News. Still to come, the monarchy debate, why England wants the royals but no King Charles. And for drivers, the latest progress report on our CityLink tunnels. A local arrested on suspicion. What's going on here? A brave act by a concerned citizen. Are you absolutely sure that it was Kevin? Or a devious plan to frame an innocent man? Something is going on, isn't it? It's just not in it. The best of Blue Healers, 8.30 tonight. And your breakfast, young man. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, thanks, Cran. Crunchy golden flakes of corn drenched in ice-cold milk. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm sorry, dear, we're right out. Abducted by aliens, they were. A gang of koalas broke in and robbed me. <gasps> Kellogg's Corn Flakes. It's the taste that made me do it. Since time began, man's attempted to fly on water, fly on the land, and fly in the air. Now we've redefined the term flying. 20 feet in the air, over 60 kilometers an hour, and 100% adrenaline. Well, there's still a few bucks to iron out. We bring you world-class action with the Formula One of the ocean, the Oracle 18-foot Grand Prix. Midday Saturday, exclusive to Seven Sport. Drive a Holden winner during Holden's 96 bottle clearance sale. Australia's number one car, Commodore, is packed with features and price to clear. And you won't drive a better deal on 96 Astros while they're moving stock. And that's not all. Drive a Marina with factory bonus and you win. Yes, you can be a winner too. The Holden dealers have to clear the track of 96 stock. Combos, Jackaroos, Apollos, Rodeo, Ute. They're driving real hard on everything. So get into your Holden dealer now while the 96 bottle clearance sale is on. Glass doors look great. They add character and value to your home. But are they really safe? This one is. This one most certainly is. It's a Doors Plus safe glass door. Fitted with specially toughened glass strong enough to withstand day-to-day -day knocks. If it does break, it becomes harmless crumb. Safe glass, only at Doors Plus. Now for the same price as ordinary glass. If it's not a Doors Plus safe glass door, it's just not safe. Tonight, oh my God! Could you turn Superman? What about a parachute? And take a 17th floor? Look down and see how far you'll be falling. Death-defying leap. Give us another five minutes. Who dares win? 7:30 tonight on Channel 7. If those southeastern arterial traffic snarls are getting you down, don't despair. Work on the new CityLink tunnels is well ahead of schedule. Kate Davies has been given a first-hand look at the massive earthworks going on metres below the city. They're burrowing under in a Melbourne at a rate of knots in Tunnel Talk 700 truckloads a week, representing 65 metres of excavation. At the South Melbourne Westgate Freeway end, they've already reached St Kilda Road and heading towards the Botanic Gardens. At ground level, the lid will soon close over and by April, Grant Street will be a pedestrian-friendly residential and arts precinct. Motorists can expect St Kilda Road traffic to return to normal by the end of this month but many will be unaware of this enormous two-storey cavity created between the road level and the top roof of the tunnel. During the bidding stages, Transfield looked at developing the area but found that financially it was unviable. But that doesn't stop other interested parties from buying the space. Theatres, shops and car parks were some of the ideas considered. To build something within it, um, there would have to be obvious strengthening works, new floors, etc. would have to be built. The tunnel, along with its electronic toll system, should be open to traffic in mid-1999. Kate Davies, 7 Nightly News.
Racehorse owners are calling for a boycott of senior jockeys if they continue to threaten strike action. Darren Linton reports the attack comes as the state's leading riders prepare for a mass meeting tonight over their pay claim. While the jockeys' attention turned to the Yarragling Cup, Nick Collum fired a broadside at the state's top hoops, calling them greedy and describing their push for a 100% rise in riding fees as ill-conceived. Some of them haven't ridden a winner for three or four years. They're getting the same amount of money for riding our horse as is the top jockey. Following last Saturday's jockey strike, he's called for owners to use apprentices, leaving senior jockeys without rides or income. And he believes many are already overpaid. Absolutely. Some jockeys are probably not worth $70 a race, is what we're saying. But we've never questioned it. Well, every time we go out there, our neck's on the line. And that's a fact. And I think you should really realise that. The Jockeys Association hopes to resolve the pay dispute during negotiations on Thursday. And the tip is, the fee for a losing ride will rise from $70 to $100. If talks fail, more strikes could follow. Darren Linton, 7 Nightly News. In a first for the United Kingdom, the royal family has been the subject of a live TV debate. But despite wide support for the monarchy, Prince Charles was the big loser. More than two million viewers took part in the historic poll. 34% believe the royals have had their day. 66% still want a monarchy. But it was damning news for Charles. The studio audience used coloured cards to vote on whether he should be king. It looks like no. The audience also gave Queen Camilla the thumbs down, many preferring to see Prince William take the throne. Two young men have been rescued after 27 days on a life raft in the Pacific. The pair were fishing off Hawaii when their boat sank. After running out of food and water, they carved goodbye messages into their paddles before finally being rescued by another fisherman. And Richard Branson's hopes of becoming the first person to fly a hot air balloon around the world look set to end in failure. The British tycoon left Morocco yesterday, but he's already having technical problems. The balloon is expected to make a forced landing in North Africa this evening. Two finance and the All Ordinaries jumped more than 14 points today on the back of New York's near record high. But gold continued to slide and the Aussie dollar slipped below 79 US cents. And from Canberra, a silly season political football with Hawthorne taking time off training for some power play. Shadow Treasurer Gareth Evans took the Hawks on a tour of Parliament House, showing them where political muscles are flexed. The Hawks became the centre of attention in the chamber as they joined school children and tourists on a summer holiday stroll along the hallowed hallways of power. There were no politicians on the job, but put this team in suits, and who knows? Well, they wouldn't be the first Hawk to make it to the top job. Sport now with Jim Wilson and Jim. The big guns hit out at Kuyo. Yes, Mitch, Boris Becker and Pete Sampras in great form while the Aussies put their poor one-day form behind them during a charity match at Port Arthur. On Today Tonight, tinnitus are ringing in the ear. I've had two clients suicide from it. One in seven people suffers from it. Cry yourself to sleep. We'll show you what causes it and what to do about it. There is hope. 6.30 tonight on 7. Now watch a Peugeot turn into extraordinary value for money. Test drive the multi-award winning Peugeot 306 today. I'd love it if someone knew me, really knew me. What I like, what I'm afraid of, what kind of toothpaste I use. That would really be wonderful. From the director of The Prince of Tides. Knocks me off my feet. Oh. Oh, hi. No! Something <laughs> might happen with this one. Would you stop calling him this one? It sounds like you're picking out a lobster. This is it. Oh, I finally found someone. Someone to share my life. I finally found the one to be with every night. Cause whatever. Barbara Streisand, Jeff Bridges, the mirror has two faces.
Hurry into Harvey Norman for this genuine IBM Pentium 100 multimedia computer with 1.2 gig hard drive. Lexmark 1020 color ring jet printer and Lotus Smart Suite. The lot for just $2,199. What a deal, but only at the deal makers Harvey Norman. Australia's biggest carpet, vinyl and underlay manufacturers have given the thumbs up to a $10 million clearance. All their stock must go now. At Carpet Choice, it's the sale we've been waiting for. It's thumbs up to incredible savings on a huge range of floor coverings. How go Australia's top brands at almost cost price? It's also thumbs up to massive savings on these famous brands and all on six months interest-free terms. The Carpet Choice $10 million manufacturer's clearance. It's getting the thumbs up from everyone. Call your local Carpet Choice store direct. 132008. Australian captain Mark Taylor has vowed to fight his way back through a form slump which had him toying with the idea of dropping himself back to Shield cricket. Today, Taylor and his men put yesterday's fifth straight loss behind them to play in a charity match in Port Arthur. And we seem to have a bit of a technical problem there. Let's go into the tennis. We'll come back to the cricket, if time permits. The big names have sounded ominous warnings for next week's Ford Australian Open on day one of the Colonial Classic at Kuyong. Defending Open champion Boris Becker was too good for Andre Medvedev, while world number one Pete Sampras also won in straight sets against Michael Stick. Other winners today, Michael Chang, while the Jim courier Yevgeny Kafelnikov match is still in progress. The star-studded eight-man field has won over $102 million in prize money alone. First up on Kuyong Centre Court, pistol Pete Sampras against Germany's Michael Stick, who gained the early service break only to slip soon after and sustain a hip injury. He managed to continue, but Sampras turned things around in the opening set, winning it in 27 minutes, six games to four. Shot. Sampras has made it clear the Classic is vital in the lead-up to next week's Ford Australian Open, and his form today suggests he'll take some beating at Melbourne Park. That's out, and that's match. Sampras. With his security entourage watching on, our lean and mean Boris Becker stepped onto centre court and was too good for Ukrainian Andrei Medvedev. Oh, great tennis from Becker. Wife Barbara and son Noah didn't have too long to wait as Boris wrapped up the match 7 6 6 1. Game set in that. Thank you. I played fairly good, I, especially from the back. My ground strokes were excellent. A scare for men's top seed Goran Ivanisevic at the Sydney International with the Croat losing the second set and his cool against Javier Sanchez. <laughs> Ivanisevic though steady to win in three. Also through to the quarterfinals, Pat Rafter and Sandon Stolly, while Todd Woodbridge was forced to forfeit his match suffering from a hip injury, placing him in doubt for next week's Ford Australian Open. OK, we've sorted out that technical problem. Let's go back to that charity match in Port Arthur. Port Arthur residents will never forget the pain of that dark Sunday last April, but they welcome anything that might ease it just a little. A crowd of more than 5,000 has turned up to the historic site to watch locals take on an Australian eleven, a mix of cricketers and high-profile AFL footballers. If we can help in any way we can down here, it's um, good. It's, uh, it was a tragedy down here, so get the community together and just uh, have some fun out here and have the public enjoy themselves. The people here have been through some disappointment over the last year or so and it's just great to, to be able to help in any way we can. It was a timely release for the Australian cricketers and Mark Taylor in particular. His form so bad even the locals thought they could snare his wicket. After yesterday's self-destruction against Pakistan, Taylor admitted he'd considered standing down as Australian captain. I've thought about, yeah, you know, a bit of a think about today, what's, what would be best for myself and, and Australian cricket. He knows he needs runs or his exit from the team might not be his decision. They might, they might, they might drop me. You can say it, man. I, I, might, I might get offended. For the record, Taylor batted number 11 today and made just 18. Nick McArdle, Seven Nightly News. Arguably the world's greatest ever athlete, Carl Lewis is on his way to Australia to compete for the first time. The nine times Olympic gold medalist will compete in a Grand Prix athletics meet in Sydney on January 27. Athletics Australia can hardly wait to announce their impressive coup. It's great pleasure that we can announce that Lewis is starting his farewell year in the Southern Hemisphere and indeed will be competing in Sydney. The 35-year-old brought the curtain down on his Olympic career in Atlanta with a ninth gold medal, an amazing fourth win in the long jump. In Sydney, Lewis will race his favourite event, the 100 metres, the distance that started it all 14 years ago when he won his first world championship. 
Meantime, another sporting career is being relaunched, with Ian Baker Finch returning to golf at the Vic Open. Today's Pro-Am is the first time Baker Finch has played competitively in six months. I'm not going to try and have a feeling of a score or a position in the tournament, rather than just a shot by shot, keep it relaxed and uh, see the improvement. Robert Allenby, whose career has rocketed in the last year, has his own novel way of helping. I just tease him. I mean, <laughs> I mean wouldn't you tease your mates? I mean, we always tease your mates. I mean, you know, I get on the first tee and uh, I'm sure I'll say something smart to him. <laughs> and a spectacular start to the Skilled Bay Classic at Port Arlington with riders pushing it to the limit around the street circuit. An early breakaway split the field as the Jayco VIS team, headed by Patrick Jonker, set the pace. His teammate Robbie McEwen took out the race, former world junior champion Dean Rogers from New South Wales falling heavily in the sprint to the line. Mark Beretta, Seven Nightly News. Whoops. And Mitch, I'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks very much, Jim. No winners from Oz Lotto this week. It jackpots to $3 million next Tuesday. Second division is worth almost $10,000. Division 3, $1,600. Fourth division, $57.80. And division 5, $29.70. But the weather seems like a winner. I'll have details next. Next, a rescued French sailor sells his story but gives nothing to his rescuers. Plus, four Vietnamese children witness a vicious racist attack on their parents. Hyundai's real value means you save real money. The 1.5 litre fuel injected XL Sprint, Australia's number one selling four cylinder car, now only $13,990, drive away. XL 5 door with power steering, only $16,990. The powerful 1.8 litre Lantra SE sedan, only $19,990. They're all drive away, no more to pay, and they all have Hyundai's three year warranty. That's Hyundai's real value breakthrough. Hyundai. It's Bowen Tile's biggest ever January sale with every tile reduced to clear. You'll flip over these. Large Italian floor tiles, only $12.95 a square metre. Fly in now. Yes! Bowen Tile's biggest ever January sale is on now at a store near you. Want to try Bert? No thanks. It, it makes my hair kind of limp. I tried it years ago. It's changed. It conditions better now. No way. I've got a date tonight. Perfect. Pert now contains not one but three conditioners individually balanced for your hair type. Okay, I'll try it. It's a blind date anyway. All right. It's definitely better. It feels kind of, well, great. Feel the difference three conditioners can make only in Pert. These days, many Australians find banking in normal hours just isn't convenient. So we've introduced Quickline, personal computer banking that lets you bank at a time and a place that suits you. There is a bank that will continue to make banking more convenient for all Australians. Which bank? The Commonwealth Bank, working for your future. Hyundai's real value means you save real money. The 1.8 litre fuel injected Lantra SE sedan, stylish and roomy. Now only $19,990, drive away, no more to pay. That's a real value breakthrough. Hyundai. As forecast, the morning cloud vanished by the afternoon, leaving us with more sunny weather and it looks like a magnificent weekend. The top temperature close enough to 21 degrees in the city and currently around 18 with that fresh sou'wester averaging 10 knots, humidity level on 50%. Just a few isolated drizzle patches over the coast this morning, but they also cleared. The Bureau says we can expect similar conditions tomorrow. Then by the weekend, that large high pressure cell should be heading directly over the Tasman and of course with a northerly airflow, much warmer conditions. Nationwide tomorrow, apart from a few showers in Sydney and 23, all capital cities should be fine, but still no relief for Perth, with a sultry 35. Victoria tomorrow, continuing fine and sunny in the north, and temperatures mainly in the high 20s. Cloudy conditions clearing to a sunny afternoon in the south, possible early drizzle about the coast. For the bays, the wind moderating tonight, then tending southeasterly tomorrow afternoon and freshening to 20 knots. And Thursday in Melbourne, almost a repeat of today. Morning cloud clearing to a mainly sunny afternoon. 21 degrees for an expected top, down to 12 tonight. And the Bureau expects our spa stable spell of weather to continue right across the weekend. Warming up each day, Friday 23, Saturday 28 and Sunday a warm 33.
And that's the way it is this Wednesday, the 8th of January. Thanks for your company. Naomi Robson with Today Tonight Next and Chris Bath has our late news at 10.30. For now, from the news team, good night.